Hi everyone, it's Jack back with another video and today I'm going to be talking about Micron Technology, a business that's a semiconductor manufacturer, mainly producing memory. It's down 47% year to date. Many companies down year to date, but down 50% is pretty significant. It's right near its 52 week lows of $48, it's around $51 right now. On a trailing basis, its P ratio is 6.6, .6, so it looks objectively very, very cheap. That is not the full story at all. I'm going to be digging into its financials in a minute. And its most recent earnings report, which released about an hour ago, which is not pretty viewing really. Revenue down significantly year over year, and earnings per share loss. It's a business that's in trouble a little bit because this is a cyclical business by nature. These markets go up and down, particularly particularly the memory market, the semiconductor industry as a whole is very cyclical, but particularly the mem memory market. And while this is a low for the market cap in the, in the short term, maybe this is a business that can be salvaged over the long term. So here's the top line number for this quarter, $4.1 billion of revenue. As I said, not pretty viewing, revenue down 39% quarter over quarter and 47% year over year. The two major business segments, the dynamic RAM, 69% of total revenue is DRAM, down 49% year over year, and NAND, 27% of total revenue, down 41%. So across the business, pretty much every segment is down quite significantly. Obviously not good use and just showing the cyclicality of this industry. Just to emphasise this revenue by business unit, all down quarter over quarter and year over year quite significantly. The least of which they affected is the embedded unit, which is only down 23% quarter over quarter and 18% year over year. I say only, that's still a significant amount of revenue loss, but nowhere near as bad as mobile and computer networking, which are down 66% and 49% on a year over year basis respectively, which is pretty rough and can, makes a considerable effect on this business's economy to scale and it's therefore its gross margin. Here's a brief financial table to show the magnitude of the losses year over year. Revenue of 4.1 billion, that's down from 6.6 .6 billion the quarter before, and the year before it was 7.7 .7 billion dollars. Absolutely tremendous declines. Gross profit of 934 million dollars, that's a 23% gross margin. The previous quarter it was 2.7 billion dollars. The, pre the previous year, 3.6 billion. These are really quite terrific losses. They're now at an operating loss, net income loss, and diluted earnings per share loss. Pretty significant if you ask me. Cash is down significantly, and cash and market all investments, while roughly the same, it's still, it's still not a good situation to be in for this company. Earnings per share never really tells the full story, and much more interest than cash flow. This quarter, they had 943 million dollars in cash flow from operations. When you add in the $2.5 billion of capex, that gives a negative free cash flow of $1.5 billion. They're also expecting quite a large amount of capex for the rest of this year, $7 billion to $7.5 million. So that's pretty concerning if you ask me. They're still enacting buybacks despite having a negative free cash flow of $1.5 billion. They did $425 million in buybacks. I do not think that is a good idea. The dividend is staying it is, but it's just a 0.9% yield, so I'm not overly concerned about that. Still a decent payout ratio. They have $14.6 billion in liquidity and $1.8 billion of net cash at the end of this quarter. However, this is really not the direction I would like to see this company going in. I don't think you should be repurchasing shares when your free cash flow is negative, regardless of how cheap they are or regardless of how cheap they appear at the time. This company has generally reasonable capital allocation. I just don't like the direction it's gone in this quarter from from 2020 to the current quarter, they've done $5 billion of free cash flow generated, $4.2 billion towards repurchasing shares, that's 63 million shares repurchased, $300 million towards settling some, pre some premiums, which diluted the share count by $5 million, and $5.1 billion returned shareholders from share repurchases. Overall, I'm quite happy to see, to see share buybacks, just not when free cash flow is going negative. Even if you think in the next few quarters it's going to go positive, I just don't think this is a reasonable use of capital when your free cash flow is negative and you're eating into your cash balance. Overall, despite the putrid numbers recently, the industry outlook is getting more positive as we go forward, but it's still not going to go back to the numbers it's recently achieved in the last year. They're expecting longer term DRAM demand to go back to the compound annual growth rate of the mid teens range and NAND demand to go back in the low to mid 20s percent range they're expecting china as the economy opens some demand to come back the problem is demand just really isn't there at the minute and there's been a significant demand mismatch if they expect industry profitability is going to remain challenged throughout 2023 and that basically means that micron is expecting its profitability to be really challenged so you can see 
that price to earnings ratio on a trailing basis of six is really quite useless. And if profitability is challenged and they come in with an earnings per share of basically zero for this year, well, they have an, an essentially infinite infinite price to earnings. This company could come under fire big time from a stock perspective and the stock could come flying down even further. Micron knows that its margins and profitability are going to be squeezed over the coming 12 months. They're putting some actions in place to do this. They're reducing the capex, as I mentioned, 7 billion, 7.5 billion range. This is much significantly reduced from what it was. Sharp reduction in wafer starts, reduced wafer starts for DRAM and NAND by 20%. Slow in process techno transitions, so pushing some out to 2025. And reducing cost project spending to decrease throughout the year, actively lowering the discretionary spend they expect to end end with a quarterly operating expense of around $850 million, which is a relatively good decrease. All these are reasonable actions to take in my opinion. This is a cyclical business, this is not the first time that this company will have been in this position and they've generally managed them okay. The guidance for the next quarter was very similar to what it was for this quarter. 3.8 billion plus or minus $200 million. That's kind of in the range of what it was this quarter and is not very impressive at all. They're expecting an even bigger hit to gross margin, 8.5% plus or minus 2.5%. That's down from 23%. They're expecting operating expenses to be in the $950 million range. That's up slightly. And they're expecting a further dilute earnings per share loss. So if we can fully expect that for the full year, this company is going to make a loss on an earnings per share basis. And that is a big problem for its valuation. As I've kept on saying, price to earnings ratio on a, on a trailing basis for this company is around 6.6 .6 and price free cash flow is around 18. These are, well, particularly on a price to earnings ratio, this is objectively cheap, but these trailing numbers are effectively meaningless going forward. This company's earnings are going to dry up, its price to earnings is going to go to infinity or very, very high, and I can see this start being squeezed greatly in the future. They've not had a bad run of things over the long term. This has generally been a quite good business to, to own. It's increased its, its revenue on a compound annual growth rate of 12.2% over the last 10 years. And it's increased free cash flow 29% in the previous year. It does okay. Earnings per share generally goes up over the long run. I think this is, has been a decent business and will continue to be a decent business. It's just in a cyclical draft at the minute. Will that provide a reasonable buying opportunity? Maybe not at the current price right now, but there could be a reasonable buying opportunity in the future when the stock comes down a bit more. And that's really the bottom line for me. $51 right now at the bottom of a cycle or going into towards the bottom of a cycle for this industry just seems like too much of a price to pay. The price to earnings ratio is essentially meaningless. Very hard to value this company. Very hard to do a DCF without a significant degree of projection and therefore not really a conservative estimate. At $50, I can see this coming down significantly. I can see it getting hurt quite a bit tomorrow, even though not really much has happened in the after hours so far. And predicting... Baking in a recession for this business, I can definitely see the company dropping below $40, perhaps even lower. Overall, I think it'll be a good business to hold over the long term. I just don't think right now is the perfect time to buy because I think there's a lot of external pressure for this company that they can't really manage themselves. With that being said, I'd love to be proven wrong on this. I'd like to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor. You should do your own research and due diligence, not just base your opinions off what I'm saying. Form your own opinions. With that being said, like and subscribe and join the video. See you again next time.